Bob Adams and his wife Marsha visit their son Drew every week. The 31-year-old contracted bacterial meningitis when he was three and hasn't been able to speak or see his entire life. For the past 14 years, he's been at the Woods facility in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, and they've asked lawmakers in Trenton to let him stay. I begged Governor Christie to come here to, to look at this facility. I know he would change his mind. But Governor Christie vetoed a bill that may have let Drew Adams and the more than 400 disabled people like him stay. It's all part of a program called Return Home New Jersey, where these patients are transferred to group homes. The New Jersey Department of Human Services administers the program. It denied our request for an interview, but gave us this statement. Cost is not the priority issue. The state will save at least 50% on each out-of-state placement upon return to New Jersey. Savings that will be invested in community-based services and supports for additional individuals. It's her life, yeah, and I don't know whether you can put a value on keeping her safe and giving her appropriate care. Sue and Paul Anderson's daughter, Kara, requires 24-7 monitoring. She suffers from severe epilepsy and usually wears a helmet to protect her from seizures. They, like Drew's parents, fear a move to a group home would put her in danger. We've already been told she'll lose her one-to-one -one support. We don't have any guarantee that the house she'll go to will have the nursing staff she's required. Dozens of parents like them are now passing around this petition, urging lawmakers to override Christie's veto and keep these people where they're safe. Do you want to try to run? It doesn't make sense to me. These are people. These are people who have lived here for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. This is their home, and they should not be made to leave. This is home. She's home. She's home. Homes many hope won't be uprooted. In Langhorne, Pennsylvania, Jessica Schneider, CBS 2 News. CBS 2's Jessica Schneider reported on the family's concerns last night at 6. Tonight, she takes the issue straight to the governor. Governor Christie, I have one more question for you. It regards... Governor Christie refused to answer my questions about people like Drew Adams, who can't see or speak, and Kara Anderson, who must wear a helmet to protect her from seizures. Their conditions require round-the-clock care 24-7 at the Woods facility in Pennsylvania. New Jersey sent them there more than a decade ago, but now the state wants to transfer them back to group homes that the state says will cut costs. But parents, like Drew's father, say it won't save money and his son will suffer. He questions Christie's decision, comparing it to the governor's own children. I voted for him twice, for God's sakes. With his children, he didn't want to move, and I understand that. You know, I understand why he didn't want to upset their lives. And that's all we're asking for is the same thing in return. Bob Adams wrote a letter to Christie asking him to visit his son's home. Christie didn't reply. So I tried to talk to the governor after his press conference this morning. He refused. A lot of angry parents out there, they want to know more about the program and why they're being, their children are being sent back. After Christie walked out the door, I approached Christie's appointee, the commissioner who runs Return Home New Jersey. We've actually been trying to reach out to your office. Will anybody be able to be, as they say, grandfathered in and allowed to stay in those facilities? Right now, there's a, a conditional veto that's pending before the legislature, which you know. That's what I tried to ask the governor about. But that's the status. The governor's office says it's all to comply with federal law, mandating community-based services to persons with disabilities. But what they don't mention is the caveat in the law when those services are appropriate. One family I spoke with yesterday, yesterday said they've been turned down by 10 group homes because the group home can't meet their needs. So the process of matching a, a, an appropriate setting in New Jersey to a family's needs needs to work in conjunction with the department. You can't, every group home does not match an individual's needs by any, by any measure. So the governor and his commission are sticking to their guns, but those families are asking lawmakers to override Christie's veto when the legislative session begins tomorrow, a move that could let their relatives stay right where they are. We tried to get answers from Governor you, Christie regards, yesterday, but he walked away. So our Jessica Schneider continued her reports, the taking the issue to the legislature. Sympathy from New Jersey lawmakers who have seen our stories and heard from the family members of disabled adults like Drew Adams and Kara Anderson. Now as the fall legislative session begins, Democrats and Republicans are working to overturn the state's decision to take them out of their treatment facilities and put them into group homes. I'm a parent and I, I understand exactly where these individuals are coming from and I'd be doing the same thing if my child was in their situation. 
Senator Kip Bateman spent an hour in a closed-door session along with his 14 Republican colleagues grilling Department of Human Services Commissioner Jen Velez. We questioned her on Wednesday. We can tell families that we're doing everything we can to protect their loved ones, and we're trying to get all the answers to make certain that if they are moved, they're going to get the care they deserve. But in the end, does it come down to overriding this veto to make anything happen? Well, you know, we haven't overridden the governor yet, but this is a very important issue. Would you vote to override the veto? I can't commit to that yet until I know for certain that um, my answers are, are met. Democratic lawmakers say they are counting votes and could make it happen. I thought the governor's conditional veto was heartless. None of Governor Christie's vetoes have ever been overridden. Is it, it is, a possibility now? That is true, but I think there's going to be a first time, and I'm hoping it's the time has arrived. Governor Christie, I have one more question for yeah, you. No, it regards... Governor Christie refused to answer our questions Wednesday, and his administration insists the transfers need to happen to comply with federal law and cut costs. We had a special election this year for that cost an additional $24 million. It was okay to do that, but when you're dealing with flesh and blood issues, we're not, we're not willing to spend the money. It just seems uh, an inappropriate set of priorities. Lawmakers tell me they need to act fast, and a vote to override Christie's veto could come as soon as next week. In Trenton, Jessica Schneider, CBS 2 News. Tonight, CBS 2's Jessica Schneider follows up, staking out a closed-door meeting with lawmakers and the families who want answers now. Can you say anything about it? Was any progress made? The head of New Jersey's Department of Human Services, Commissioner Jennifer Velez, refusing to talk about her meeting with legislators and the family members of disabled adults who are being told they'll soon have to move out of their current facilities and into group homes. We saw Commissioner Velez as she was leaving. She didn't comment to us. Did she tell you anything that might give you some hope or give you any information? No, no, no. So you're just not really getting any answers? I'm just getting the party, or not the party line, but the DDD, DHS line that they think that this is a great policy for all these disabled people. Carolyn Reichenbach's 49-year-old brother Richard suffers from epilepsy and severe mental retardation. He's received care at the Woods facility in Pennsylvania for three decades. But the program called Return Home New Jersey will soon remove him from this place he calls home into a group home. His family says will be much less safe. I would like New Jersey to do the right thing and let people that have been out of state for a long time and need to be out of state to stay there. New Jersey put them there years ago because New Jersey deemed it was the best placement for them. Extremely frustrated that, that we don't seem to get through to these people, the direness of the situation. Carl Schultz has been pleading with lawmakers to let his son Peter stay in New Hampshire, where he currently receives care for months. He says legislators tell him they want to help, but Governor Christie's veto of a bill that may have kept Schultz's son where he is is making the process less certain. They're not going to vote to override, I'm quite sure of that, but it seems that they would be open to another bill and that gives some hope. There's no word yet how soon these disabled adults could be moved out of their current facilities. In Somerville, New Jersey, Jessica Schneider, CBS 2 News. Tonight, there's new hope for their families who've been fighting to keep their loved ones where they are. CBS 2's Jessica Schneider was there today as those families made emotional pleas to state lawmakers. We need a resolution quickly. You know, please don't make her come back here. Maureen Clark is tired of fighting the state. Her 47-year-old daughter, Maura, lives here at the Woods facility in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, just over the New Jersey border. She gets one-on-one -on -one care for her cerebral palsy that prevents her from speaking, walking, or even feeding herself. State officials moved her to the Pennsylvania care facility three decades ago because New Jersey lacked appropriate care. But now the state has plans to move her and hundreds like her back and put them into group homes. It hasn't worked, not at all. Rita O'Grady's 23-year-old son, Tyler, is autistic. He was moved into a group home setting two years ago. Since then, he's been in jail a total of 19 days because of his violent outbursts. It's been nothing but a nightmare, and DDD, their only solution is to find another community provider. These parents are persistent after Governor Christie vetoed a bill that would have let many of those disabled adults stay where they are. Parents lobbied lawmakers for another bill that is close to reaching the floor in both the Assembly and the Senate.
The bill will allow family members to petition in writing to keep the patients where they are if those adults have lived out of state for more than 20 years or they are particularly medically or behaviorally fragile. It won't get Tyler Loftus back to Woods, but other parents are hopeful it will help their children already there. She'll die if, if she doesn't get that care. A dire circumstance parents want lawmakers to act to prevent. In Trenton, New Jersey, Jessica Schneider, CBS 2 News. We begin tonight with a heart-wrenching two-and-a-half-year battle for the parents of disabled adults in New Jersey. Their fight to keep their children in the places they've called home for years is finally over. CBS 2 reporter Jessica Schneider has spent months demanding answers from Governor Christie and lawmakers and now getting action with a vote by the Senate today. The Senate chambers erupted in applause and family members choked back emotion. I saw you up there and, and you were wiping tears away. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. This is what we've been waiting for for so long. Carl Schultz's 34-year-old son Peter is prone to violent seizures and is severely disabled. New Jersey sent him to New Hampshire 15 years ago because they didn't have an adequate care facility for him here. Now Schultz's son will be able to stay indefinitely in New Hampshire after years years of Governor Christie's administration telling him he would have to leave. When he saw there were no savings, then he saw, well, maybe there is something wrong with this policy. Return Home New Jersey was a plan designed to bring disabled adults back from other states and put them into group homes, all to save money. Governor Christie refused to back down from the program until he met face-to-face -face with frustrated and heartbroken parents last week. He was great. He said, when a policy is not working, you've got to pull the reins back. And he did the right thing. He did the right thing. A lot of angry parents out there, they want to know more about the program and why they're being, their children are being sent back. The governor refused to answer our questions in October, but issued this statement today. The governor agreed with the need for sensible changes that ensure the safety and well-being of every New Jerseyan residing in an out-of-state placement. I, I think the whole program was flawed from the beginning. Republican Senator Kip Bateman led the charge, along with Democratic Senator Bob Gordon, to pass a bill in the state Senate that will let more than 300 families keep their loved ones where they are. I have peace. I have absolute peace that my brother will be at his home for the rest of his life. We covered yes. your story. Yes. Did that well, I help? Think, oh, yes. I think the media helped. I, the stories were wonderful. And I think it, it made it a known fact what was going on. A struggle that lasted two and a half years, now over for these families. In Trenton, New Jersey, Jessica Schneider, CBS 2 News.